And good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting of the City of Lenore for Monday, April the 19th, 2021. It is a little different for us because we usually meet on Tuesday, but uh, because of some uh, legal municipality meeting that we had this week, originally scheduled for this week, which you we can't do, we are doing it virtually all week, but uh, we moved the council meeting sometime back to Monday. So glad you're with us tonight on a different night than we normally do, but uh, we're glad to be a part of that. Welcome. Uh, we do have several things tonight going on, and as we normally start our meeting, we have a moment of silence and a pledge of allegiance, and we'll do that in just a minute. We'd like for you to keep in, uh, certainly in your thoughts and prayers, continuing for uh, all of us as we continue to uh, move through COVID-19 and into uh, hopefully times getting better and better. We're certainly glad as tonight we have a part of our school with us tonight from High Brighton and we're proud of them and we'll be talking about that in a minute but we'll pray for those as they continue their school year and back and get being able to be back in school more than they have been before so we will continue prayers for uh, moving forward with that and for um, everyone who is uh, you know struggling through this we continue to keep you in our thoughts and prayers right now before we do that though I'm going to uh, have a roll call let everyone know who is with us this evening and I'll start with our, our council uh, that's here with us tonight. Of course, I'm here as the mayor. Uh, Chrissy Thomas, our mayor pro tem, is here. Ike Perkins, council member. John Beal, council member. Ben Willis, council member. Todd Perdue, council member uh, with us. Uh, our city attorney, TJ Rohr, is with us. City manager, Scott Hildebrand, is here. And our communication director, uh, Joshua Harris, is here. And our uh, Director of Public Works, Jared Wright, is here with us in the room. I think I've got everybody. We'll be introducing everyone else that's with us in a minute. Now let me call those that are not with us tonight. Uh, Council Member Ralph Presswood. And I think Ralph is out of town. Council Member David Stevens. And David's probably still doing, involved in working <laughs> at this point with taxes and everything. All right, our city clerk, Shirley Cannon. And I think Shirley is probably with us on Zoom. Uh, department heads, we'll start with our finance director, Donna Bean. Here. Thank you, Donna. Fire Chief Ken Hare. I'm here. Thank you, sir. Economic Development Main Street Director, Kaylin Horn. I'm here. Thank you. Our Police Chief, Brent Phelps. Andy Wilson. Our Captain, uh, Andy Wilson, is with us. Yes, tonight. sir. I'm here. Thank you, sir. Our Parks and Recreation Director, Kenny Story. I'm here. Public Utilities Director, Radford Thomas. I saw him. There he is. You see him? I can see him on there. Thank you. Our Planning Director, Jenny Wheelock. I'm here. Thank you very much. All right, we welcome you here and we'll get started now. We'll rise for please for a moment of silence and remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. We salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> tonight we start with a very special recognition tonight and I'm uh, going to uh, come down to the podium and we're going to uh, meet our High Brighton men's soccer team and talk about their uh, tremendous season and welcome them to our council meeting tonight. We are glad that that you guys could be with us. We have something that we'd like to present to you. And I know that we have the principal of High Brighton High School, School Courtney Wright, is with us. 
Head coach, Jim Blanton. Jim, that's welcome. Assistant coach. Mark Anderson. Mark, thank you. Mark, I know you. I just drew a block right there. And athletic director, Derek Reeves, is with us. And thank you guys for being there. And I'm going to let you introduce the guys you have. Jim, if you will, you will come up. And uh, Mark, if you guys want to come up, we'll read the, the proclamation. Courtney and, and Derek, too, if y'all will come with us. First of all, we just want to say how proud of we are of you guys. It's not, it's, you, you did a, a, a monumental job in a very, very tough time. Playing soccer, football, whatever it is during a COVID situation that you're in, and to compete the way that you did this year. I know you have a wonderful uh, team and a wonderful group of guys that you'll be introducing in a few minutes to us, but we are very proud of you and what you, what you accomplished. So I'm going to read this resolution and present it to you, and then I'm going to let you guys talk a little bit about it. You know, I've known Jim since he was about this big. It's hard to believe that Jim Blanton was ever that size. But uh, I coached you when you played in uh, early soccer, rec ball, and baseball, and all kind of things. So we've known each other for a long time. I'm really proud of watching Jim grow. Actually, you played with my son Joe at High Brighton, and uh, you guys had some great soccer teams in those days as well. So you carried the tradition forward. Anyway, this is honoring our High Brighton High School men's 2021 soccer team. Whereas the hard work, dedication, sportsmanship, and talent of the 2021 High Brighton men's soccer team led these student athletes to finish their season 18-1-0. And whereas the Panthers went undefeated 14-0 in the Northwestern Foothills 2A where they won the conference championship for the third consecutive year. And whereas High Brighton's men's soccer won the Western Regional Championship for the first time since 1989, taking the team to their second appearance in a North Carolina High School Athletic Association men's soccer title game. And whereas the Panthers scored 122 goals and allowed only 13 goals all year with 14 shutouts in 19 games. And the team ranked 16th in the nation, second overall in the state, and first in the 2A division of North Carolina. And whereas winning the regional championship and playing in the state championship game brought honor and recognition to High Brighton High School on the local and state level, and whereas head coach Jim Blanton, the entire coaching staff, team, parents, the faculty, and the student body were an integral part of, in supporting the players and guiding the team to a victory all season long. Now, for, therefore, it be it resolved that I, as mayor, and on behalf of the city of Lenore City Council and all of our citizens, do hereby recognize and congratulate the 2021 High Brighton High School Panthers men's soccer team on their successful season, their Western Regional Championship victory, and their journey to the 2021 State Championship game. This, the 19th day of April 2021. Jim, congratulations. Thank you very much. Very proud of you guys. Um, thank you very much. Um, it's been an honor to coach at High Brighton these number of years. I've been there 18 years, I guess. Um, as a former player at High Brighton High School and a graduate of High Brighton High School and growing up in Lenore, it's, it was my dream to come back and be able to try to give a little bit of some of the things I learned from this guy as a coach. This guy coached me too when I was a young kid, you know, growing up in a home where there was no father and hoping to give back a little bit like this. Um, it's been tremendous um, to be able to do this to be able to just coach these young men because there's not a finer group of young people than the ones that I get to coach every single day. Um, and the people I work with, my coaching staff, Mark Anderson's here. He was one of my coaches when I played soccer in high school. He's been around that long at High Brighton. Scott Frank Amont, Trevor Allen. <clears throat> and then the principal that we have is tremendous. Um, she loves the kids. She works hard for the kids, and everything she does is all about those kids, um, and nobody loves them more than she does. Our athletic director is one of the greatest men you'll ever meet, and he loses sleep <laughs> all day, every day, 
working hard for these kids and doing everything he can for these kids as well. And I couldn't be more proud to be a part of what High Brighton High School athletics, academics, and everything else puts forward. Um, my players that I want to introduce tonight, this is just a small uh, group of the players, um, and I'll have them come up each. But um, these are my captains and the leaders of my team, and I'll have them come up. And the first one is Simon Hawkins, Mac Waters, David Frankies, and Alan Mesa. And I just want to congratulate them on this tremendous effort and being, you know, tremendous people on and off the field and being a great representation of High Brighton High School and Lenore at all times and everything that they do. So thank you guys. Thank you, Jim. I just want to say that it is a privilege and an honor to work at High Brighton High School. And what Coach Blanton said about these young men, it's not just on the soccer field. It is on and off the field. These young men carry themselves. They respect everyone that they encounter. They are wonderful, kind, mannerly, you know, saying thank you to me every time I hold the door for them. But I brought my phone in because I wanted to share with you guys a message that was sent to us. After the state championship game, one of the players for Croatan, their mom, sent Coach Reeves an email. And it made me tear up when Coach Reeves shared it with us. And I'll just kind of summarize what she said. But she said that our boys played one heck of a game, that they um, were very kind and respectful and gracious, even though they didn't win the game. Of course, it did go into overtime. They did a great job on the field. But also that our fans were respectful. And basically that we were the epitome of sportsmanship. And that even though they'd never heard of High Brighton High School, they will never forget playing High Brighton High School in 2021. And that's just a summary of what she said, but it really touched me because it's what you do in sports, it prepares you for life. You know, they learn about teamwork and things that are gonna carry them for the rest of their lives. And so it just shows us that not only are they good athletes, but they're great men. So thank you, Coach Blanton, Coach Henderson, and Coach Reeves, and thank you. Thank you. Well. And I also told them they look better than me. I said, boys, y'all are making me look bad. I mean, look how sharp they are. Coach Reeves, you want to add anything? Coach is AD. Just in, in closing up, the one thing I've been here, I had the pleasure of doing this three times now with some teams that we've had recently. And uh, not that all of our teams don't exhibit this, uh, but it's just funny that the common denominator is what you see in just the four guys that are here behind us is the, is the dedication and the work ethic, but the sportsmanship, the attitude, and the behavior of them. Uh, and they're just exa great examples of what student athletes are here in Caldwell County and here in Lenore. And uh, I just couldn't be more proud of them. And I'm just thank thankful for everything that Coach Blanton does for them every day. Thank you. Picture with everybody if we can't. Congratulations, guys. Oh, Lord. Get your caps on there. Yeah, she'll be behind there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my Congratulations, guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you guys very much. Good job. Thank you, Thank you guys. You've been with us. Carolina after Wake. Is it Wake 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 Wake
We're terrible, but we, we're nice. <laughs> we're very honored to have them with us tonight. It was a great season for them. Uh, our football team also at High Brighton had a, had a great season. Uh, unfortunately, that ended this past Friday night, 13 to 12 loss to a tough team from Burns. And, uh, you know, those kind of things happen. But I tell you, to perform the way all of our teams have during this time during COVID, it's just amazing that they have been able to, uh, to keep things going and, and be as uh, uh, work like they have and, and try to stay healthy and, and all the things they were doing. So it, it's been a, a, a tough time, but it's been great that uh, we've had, we had three teams in the playoffs, I think, uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. in this area. And that was, unfortunately, we all of them kind of went out Friday night, but that happens. And, but uh, anyway, they'll all be back and hopefully they at least got to have a season during this very tough time. So very proud of what uh, the soccer team, football team, and other teams all did uh, this year. So yeah. our congratulations to all. Okay, we'll move on then to our, uh, we do not have matters scheduled for public hearing this evening. So we'll move to our consent agenda items, which consists of minutes of our city council meeting of Tuesday, <laughs> April 6, 2021. Item B is an authorizing resolution. This is a lease agreement. Uh, a portion of the parking lot located at 601 West Avenue, that's behind the Lenore Fire Department, will be leased to the North Carolina State Employees Credit Union for the purpose of an ATM. The lease will be for a term of five years at an annual rate of $1,200. Note the legal ad was published on Wednesday, March 17th, uh, meeting the 30-day notice requirement for the rental or lease of city-owned property. Item C is the resolution that we just read for uh, presented to High Brighton High School soccer team, uh, congratulating them for being the uh, runner-up uh, state champions at the uh, North Carolina High School Athletic Association 2A State Talk Soccer Championship. <clears throat> so I'll present those to you for your consent agenda. Any discussion and or motion? Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we approve consent agenda items as presented. We have a motion from Council Member Willis to approve the consent agenda items A, B, and C as presented. No other discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. <clears throat> I don't think that we had anyone on the uh, phone that was here. So, uh -huh. thank you. That carries unanimously for the those that are here. Okay, we'll move on then to we do. Uh, well, actually, we do have uh, for requests and petitions of any citizens. If there's anyone here tonight that would like to address the council, uh, this is the time to do so open that up anyone no one here with us but is there if there's anyone on the uh, zoom call hearing no one we'll move on then tonight for reports and uh, of our boards and commissions and tonight we will hear from mr rick oxford the plant administrator for the western piedmont council of governments will hold his second of two public meetings to receive comments regarding the fy 2021 action plan for the city of lenore and the unifor home consortium as part of the five-year consolidated plan as submitted. And this plan is required by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, outlines goals and actions for the plan of the city of Lenore and the Uniform Home Consortium, and I'll let you do the rest. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mayor, members of the council, good evening. Good evening. Good, good evening. Okay, we are here as uh, for our second public meeting regarding the uh, approval and submittal of the city's action plan for uh, FY 2021. Last year we did a five-year consolidated plan and that was year one. It included year one action plan. Now each year we do another uh, <clears throat> we do another action plan. So this is actually year two and um, so I'll start with the city of Lenore CDBG. Uh, the city will, has been notified that they will receive $161,762 for CDBG funds. And uh, we have those budgeted 20% uh, going toward admin and uh, the balance going toward public facilities, which will be a continuation of the uh, CDBG funds we've had the past 
two years. And that'll be $129,410 for renovations at the Old Lenore High School complex, which includes the gym, the auditorium, and Matt Cook Stadium. And we're currently working on that now with our present CDBG funds. <coughs> Any questions on that? <laughs> I'm not, I, not from you. <laughs> I support whatever the council does. <laughs> I defer my, my questions to our city attorney. <laughs> oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> okay, I'll move on then. Uh, with the uh, home program, City of Lenore is the lead entity of the 28-member local government uh, consortium, uh, Unifor Consortium. And um, this year we've been notified we'll receive $1,154,095 from HUD in the uh, form of home funds. We anticipate, or we're projecting, will receive 300,000 in program income for a total of uh, $1,454,095. And that, that program income comes to us from, we've made loans throughout the years to multifamily housing uh, developers and they pay us back. Uh, annually and we also receive funds as people sell their properties that we've assisted with down payment assistance that money comes back into the program and we just recycle the money so uh, we have budgeted uh, six hundred and five thousand six hundred forty three dollars for uh, down payment assistance from the um, from the program and another another hundred and eighty four thousand five hundred and ninety one dollars from program income for down payment assistance that should allow us to do about 36 37 maybe 40 homes um, we have thirty thousand budgeted toward program income administration so as that money comes back it creates additional work requirements and so there's allowable 10 percent admin on that um, we budgeted 173 173,115 dollars for chodo uh, that would be the nonprofit organizations that are doing community housing uh, community housing development organizations which are doing housing related activities. And in the past, we funded uh, the habitats, or most recently the habitats, but it is open to other applicants as well, as long as they meet the CHODO requirements. And we'll be having a, a, a round where we solicit applications from those entities. And we budgeted $229,928 for multifamily housing activities. And this is, again, where we would loan funds to multifamily housing developers that are doing apartment complexes. Those are typically um, uh, low-income housing tax credit projects or workforce development projects. And they come to us and ask for some local commitment and that helps them score well when trying to seek funding from the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency. And we have a 10% a admin budgeted and a 10% contingency fund, uh, all totaling $1,454,095. Any questions? Mr. Arford, I have a question. Okay. In regards to the funds that you said that go to Habitat, are these funds to individuals that submit an applications or 
are they to Habitat, and Habitat distributes the money to the applicants. Okay. Uh, it, it's not necessarily hab Habitat. It, it is a non uh, TOTO is a community housing development organization, which is basically a nonprofit organization that is doing some type of housing-related activity. Mm -hmm. And we have a, we'll send out a, application forms to uh, all, all these nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And they can or cannot send, <laughs> submit an application to us. And then we sort of grade those applications and we see which ones fit the mold that HUD has established best and then we try to fund those. Most recently, it has been we fund the habitats because the habitats are, they will take that money and they will, it will assist them in building a house. And then that house is sold to a low to moderate income household. Mm -hmm. So end result of the home funds needs to be a home. <laughs> a home is a good, you know, good thing to. Uh, we, we're looking for an end beneficiary, and the end beneficiary would actually be that person buying the house. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> Just sit here. Have it. Just have it. Yes, I have it. It's making me nervous. <laughs> Even though he moved. <laughs> yeah. Goes to the okay. past. <laughs> I like you, Rick. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice here. Any comments, Mr. Ilway? I would just mention also that the um, the new stimulus money that was approved by Congress has about four point one million dollars going to the Unifor area, which we're the lead entity to go back and look at homelessness. And so the um, the COG is leading the effort. We're going to have a meeting in a couple of weeks to come up with some kind of plan for that, and we'll come back at some point with that budget amendment uh, for that. But uh, that includes Catawba, Burke, Alexander, and Caldwell County for that. So I just want to pass that along. Okay. That's good. And we don't know the... We don't know the rules yet. Don't know the rules and regulations on that, so it should be fun. Okay. Uh, anyhow, uh, if you... I need to submit this application or this uh, action plan to HUD with your approval. Just hand that to Mr. Uh, City Attorney over there, Mr. Roy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Rick. And mm -hmm. uh, if there's no other questions, then uh, we do need to uh, put this for the council for action. Uh, so there would be the FY 2021 action plan and the FY 2021 Unifor Consortium home plan uh, for approval. Uh, this uh, is submitted by Rick Oxford, the plan administrator. So that's the, that's the plan. So tonight was the second of the meeting, so we have fulfilled that. So I'll put this out to the council for your either any more discussion and or motion considering this. Mr. Mayor, yes. make a motion that we approve the FY 2021 action plan as well as the Unifor Consortium home plan. Okay. You heard the motion from Councilmember Perkins to approve the uh, two plans as presented by uh, Mr. Oxford from the uh, Western Piedmont Council of Governments. If no other discussion, we'll call for the question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. That carries. You know, and we will bring the program ordinances that have the money attached to it next month. So I just want to let you know that. This is okay. just the plan today. The money is on the way, huh? <laughs> Checks, in the mail. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Thank you for being with us these last couple of meetings. We appreciate you, you working with you and all that you, you do with the, the Council of Governments. It's a pleasure to work together. All right, we'll move on then to uh, the report and recommendations of the City Manager, Mr. Hildebrand. Mr. Mayor, Council, a couple items for information this evening. The uh, Planning Board will conduct a virtual meeting on Monday, April 26 at 5.30 p.m. The Committee of Whole will meet uh, next Tuesday in a virtual meeting, April 27th, 8.30. Uh, and those that attend in person will be third floor city hall. And then the Foothills Regional Airport Authority will meet in a virtual meeting on Wednesday, April 28th at noon. And I think that's virtual. So it says at the airport facility, but I think you'll be meeting virtually. And we have been to a meeting that way. So I don't know if there's any change at this point. We've Correct. discussed it, but not sure we it's can. It's a small meeting room over there. Yeah. 
Uh, tonight we have two items for council action. Uh, both of these are regarding engineering services agreement. Uh, the first one is uh, an agreement with McGill Associates for a water interconnect project. A little bit of details on that. Um, we're looking at looking at inter water interconnection and the cost of that's around three million dollars. But what we want you to prove is an engineering agreement to go back and develop an engineering report, surveying, design and permitting phase, bidding phase, easement survey, and maps. Uh, however, the first two phases are the critical part. That gets us started. Uh, the projects go forward. We'll go back and, and I guess, utilize the other funds. Uh, so the first amount, though it's a total of $194,000, we're just asking right now a commitment to sign the agreement, but we'll only use, utilize $47,000, the first two phases of that. If the project merits uh, moving forward, we'll go back and try to get funding for that, include the other monies in that project fund. But the first one's an interconnect project, again, roughly $3 million for that. But the contract with McGill would be for 194. Any questions? If not, Radford Thomas is on the phone as well. That he can give more details. Okay. You see the recommendation? This is only for number one, right? Now, Correct. It? And this okay. part of our risk resiliency studies looks at way we can go back and, and I guess mitigate risk for our water system. And this is a way to do that by looking at interconnections as a possibility to tie into somebody else. If something happens to our system, right. we can go back and have a backup of and some sort. So, yeah. Yes. And the state's pushing this uh, as well, so this may be a way to get funded. Yep. yep. All right, you heard the recommendation from the uh, uh, staff and city manager for the engineering services agreement with McGill Associates uh, for the contract for engineering services with McGill for the water interconnect project. Is there any discussion? Not a need a motion. I'll make that motion, please. <clears throat> okay, I have a motion from Councilmember Purdue for the engineering services agreement as presented. If no other uh, comments, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All, all opposed. Thank you. That carries unanimously. Okay. The uh, second agreement with McGill Associates for uh, engineering services is for the Whitman Water Transmission Main replacement. Uh, this has been our CIP for a number of years. Uh, estimated cost for this phase is a little over $5 million. Uh, the contract with McGill would be for $270,000. Again, the same type thing. We'd go back and get a preliminary engineering report, uh, surveying phase, design permitting phase, bidding award phase, and then if we need easements on that. However, as I said in the first one, we'll only go back, commit right now to $49,000 for the first two phases. If it gets funded and we think it's a legitimate project to move forward with at that time, we'd expend the 270. But again, um, 270 now for a $5 million project, Whitnell Transmission Line. And again, Radford Thomas is on the line if you want more details about the project. Okay, heard the recommendation for And we talked about this during our uh, yeah. budget yeah. Right. discussion. Engineering Services Agreement with McGill. Any, any questions or comments from the council? Not this recommendation from uh, city manager and staff for the approval to enter into the contract for engineering services with McGill Associates for the Whitnell water transmission main replacement. I hear nothing, I need a motion. Make a motion to approve. Motion from Mayor Pro Tem Thomas to approve the engineering services agreement as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Here's an answer. Anything have. else? That's all I have. All right. Uh, well, well, let me say one thing. <clears throat> I just want to take the opportunity to thank uh, all of our folks last week for the litter sweep. We had over 60 employees and some council members as well uh, go back and pick up uh, litter throughout the community. And I want to thank Joshua Harris and we've got Jared Wright in the back of the room as well. They helped coordinate that. And I know the county did that on Saturday, but it made a big difference uh, in the community. And we got more to do, but uh, appreciate the community coming out to do that because it means a lot. So. It was a great uh, uh, call for awareness of what's going on. Great turnout. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, Jared, I know you did a great job of, of uh, coordinating, putting together with several other helpers that you had involved, and Joshua, of course, getting all the information out, taking good pictures. We appreciate that. And uh, uh, it, was a, it, was, it was a fun day. My back and legs hurt, but it was still a fun day. 
<laughs> to to get those things done. So. <laughs> Mr. Willis, you can tell the truth about that. Go ahead. You wanna... I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just remember seeing I remember seeing these two gentlemen take a left pretty early. <laughs> no truth to that whatsoever. <laughs> we went up to supervise the hot dogs being delivered. Yeah, that's right. That hurts my knees too. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a uh, great effort. We appreciate uh, working with the county uh, together on that. Great effort from all over, and I hope that will continue. Uh, I know we've got a lot, long way to go, and we've still got a lot of, uh, of uh, teaching of people to quit being litter bugs and throwing yeah. things out, uh, and we will keep working on that. So we thank you for all the hard work on yes. that. So thank you. Well done. Jared, anything else while you're here with us that you'd like to, to bring up? Don't want to put you on the spot, but... I just want to echo what Mr. Gilbrand said. I do want to express my appreciation to council members and staff that participated in the litter pickup event. Joshua, you were instrumental in helping coordinate that, so thank you. Uh, 60 folks roughly picked up 150 bags of trash in two hours. Wow. That's, uh, that's phenomenal. Uh, of course, there's more to pick up, but I do want to say I appreciate everything that everyone did to participate. Hopefully this will gain some traction and some momentum so we won't have to have a, a dedicated litter pickup day. Instead, the problem will take care of itself if people are just more proactive in the community. Yeah. Thank you. Thank we appreciate you. that. By the way, I picked up two more than I Perkins did. <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, it was only the bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's one bag. I mean, it yes, sir. Mr. Harris. I'm not sure if you're aware, but while I was driving around um, taking pictures and ordering hot dogs and pizzas, Jared and his crew actually walked all of High Brighton Drive and then we had people walking Fairview Drive and Harrisburg Drive. We had a lot of people go a long way, so. Yeah. yeah. That's very sore. true. No lie. I was sore. Yeah, I believe it. My grab was broke, so I was bending over for oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that was not easy. The next day. <laughs> Thank goodness we had a few of those, that's for sure. That, yeah. was, uh, that was great. Thank you, Kaylin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. Kaylin Horn uh, directed our group yes, down through, did. through town. Let so. me borrow her. And, and she did a good job with that, <laughs> keeping us in the right direction where we're going. So we appreciate that. Everybody's work on that. It was great, great to, to do that. All right, we'll move on then to um, report and recommendations of our city attorney, Mr. Rohr. I'll make the report. Okay, thank you. Appreciate uh, keeping us straight, even though it's, uh, we haven't got a lot going on right at the moment. So that's a good thing. It's good not have, it, the less you have me do is probably the better for the city. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, as far as my, I don't have anything really to, to report. Uh, at this point in time, we will have some uh, board appointments coming up in the future where it looks like we're going to have a few changes to, uh, to be made to a couple boards that are coming. So I will, I will let you know those when that time comes, but don't have anything to report on that now. Um, and everything else I think is going very well. Anything from any of our council members to come before us? I got, uh, Mr. Mayor. The, yes, sir. The cleanup effort extended beyond downtown. Uh, Pastor Terry Hunt coordinated a a crew out on Valway Circle, Valway Street, out in the Valmead community, and uh, Reverend Rocky Dula coordinated a, a group on the Miller Hill Road, and I had a group on Broadway from Harper Avenue all the way into the city limits off of Broadway. So, and I just wanted to take this time to thank all of those people for, for their efforts. So, I didn't only go downtown, we, we were there on Saturday, so. Just want to say that the whole city was hopefully <laughs> hopefully clean now. Yeah, that's good. Thanks so thank all those guys for their efforts as yeah, well. I saw people all throughout the county on Saturday. It's great. It's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Good to see that. And I know some of the uh, civic organizations have got some things lined up toward the end of the month. I've seen yeah. that they are they are working on and putting together. Uh, I think it's the impact. Of our Rotary group is going to do some things. I noticed so it's going to continue through. Uh, the remainder of, of April, uh, it needs to be continued through the rest of the year and, and even beyond that, but uh, at least we're getting some great uh, uh, publicity for it right now and letting people know what, what it needs to be done. Uh, Councilmember Perkins, you want to mention anything about some of the conversations today about the uh, uh, vaccinations and that kind of thing? Yeah, we had a meeting today with the CEO of Caldwell, West Caldwell Health Council regarding vaccinations uh, and we are encouraging everyone if you have not had it it's very important that you do get your vaccination 
if you don't do it for yourself, then do it for your family or for all of those people around you, all the people that you're working with. And we are putting forth an effort to make it convenient for everybody to get your vaccine. Right now, tentatively, we may schedule a mobile vaccine, vaccination unit in our communities. Uh, and we want to do it on a Sunday when you just come out of church and walk right into the vaccination clinic too. And we think that would be more helpful if we put that rather than to have the people to go to where the shops are. We thought it'd be better to bring the shops where the people are at. So just help us to spread the word and to tell our folks that it's necessary. It's, 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 it's good that you get it to help everybody along this. So it was a good meeting. Uh, Mr. May McCrary of Caldwell, West Caldwell Health Stop. Clinic is very instrumental in this and helping us to make sure that everybody in Caldwell County and Lenore receives a vaccination. Great. Yeah. Very good. Great. Good. 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 Good report on that. Anything else from any of the council members? Mr. Willis, anything out of the yeah. League of Municipalities that's going yeah, on? Just getting ready for City Vision this week. Yeah, that's City Vision on. is this week. So uh, a number yeah. of us will be involved with that. And uh, Sorry we couldn't be live where they yeah. where it's going. But next year, next year it's set for uh, Wilmington. Is it Wilmington or is it? Uh, Concord. Concord. Remember, we miss, we, we've shuffled it around. So yeah, we, we have moved around so much. I'm not sure. Moved. Where it is, but anyway, it's scheduled to be live if it can be. So we will look, we'll look forward to that day. All right. Anything else to come before us at all? All right. If not, we stand adjourned.